Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another edition of some fall cooking. I am so excited about today's video and you know what? I don't have a coffee cup. No intro is complete without a coffee cup. Hang on a second. Also, is it just me or do you guys enjoy the point of the morning when you get to pick out which coffee cup you're gonna use? Because I think it's fun. Okay, so I got my coffee cup and normally I'm standing here with the intro telling you guys what we're gonna do with my coffee already made. But first thing that we're gonna do is make a pumpkin spice latte. And I do all kinds of pumpkin drinks, especially around this time of year, but this one is a little bit more legit because a latte, you need steamed milk. So you make it on the stove top and well, I'll show you what we're gonna do. But on top of that, we're gonna do a couple other really yummy, yummy fall recipes and things that you can even put in your freezer. So maybe a little bit of freezer prep, a little bit of meal inspiration, kind of a little bit of everything today. But like I said, no intro is complete without a cup of coffee. So let's make a great pumpkin latte that's super simple and I'm afraid if I start doing this, I'm gonna wanna do this every morning and then I'm gonna have to clean a pan every single morning. But let's get started. Okay, so I got everything out that I'm gonna be making this with. I'm gonna give you a few like variations so that you can maybe do with whatever you have on hand. So I have got this, uh, it's an unsweet creamer from Silk and it is pumpkin pie spice, although I'm going to say it doesn't have a super pumpkin-y taste, so I'm not gonna be bothered by the fact that it could be over pumpkin or whatever you wanna call it. So I've got this, so instead of this, you could do almond milk, you could do uh, coconut creamer, you could do heavy cream, you could do regular milk, whatever you wanna use. So this is what I'm using for my milk product. And then I've got some stevia. Again, you could use sugar, you could use maple syrup, whatever you wanna use. And then I've got some pumpkin um, that I have been kind of using out of. And by the way, these little thingies for the top of uh, cans are super helpful. I'll leave them linked below. Um, so I've had that covered up so I can grab out a little bit. And then I've got some nutmeg, some cloves, some cinnamon, and some vanilla. And then I have my favorite roast of coffee. You can use any kind of coffee you want to use. I recommend using a dark roast. That's personally the flavor I like to have going on. So this is my favorite. So we are going to brew a cup of coffee to go to work with all of this. So let's get that going. While I, my Keurig is getting heated up and all of that, uh, we're gonna put together the milk situation into a saucepan. We're gonna start with half a cup of the silk almond creamer. And then three tablespoons of pumpkin puree. An eighth of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg and a little less than an eighth of a teaspoon of ground clove, or even half of that, maybe a sixteenth of a teaspoon. You don't want too much ground clove. So it's a pretty strong flavor. Then half a teaspoon of cinnamon, a little splash of vanilla, and then sweeten it however sweet you would want it with whatever you're sweetening it with. Now I'm gonna take my great little Amazon frother that I use for everything coffee and kind of mix it around in here. Okay, now we're gonna throw this on the stove 
and turn it on, but not for long because obviously there's not a lot of liquid in there and we wanna do this as quickly as possible. I'm also going to grab my little whisk that I love for sauces and all kinds of stuff like that and kind of keep it moving as I get it nice and steamed up and get that milk cooked in with all the other flavors. I'm gonna see if I can get past the steam here so you guys can see what's going on. You see those like little bubbles that are starting to come through? You just want it to get to that point. And then I'm gonna tip it up and use my little frother again and really get the foam action going on and then dump it on top of my coffee. Oh my goodness. I don't know if this is so great. Like I said, do I want to do this every morning? Oh, so good. It's so good. Now we're feeling like an intro, right? We got the coffee, everything. <laughs> so let's get rolling. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is I am going to make apple butter. And if you guys don't know, hang on, I got to take another sip of this. Oh my goodness. And if you guys don't know what apple butter is, it's something that's similar to applesauce. So I'm sure most people know what applesauce is, but it's a lot more condensed. So you cook the apples a lot longer than when you make applesauce and you add a lot of spices and yumminess all together. So you need a slow cooker to do this. I think there's other ways to do this, but I've always just done it in my slow cooker. You can also can applesauce, which is really great. I'm not sure how much this recipe that I found makes exactly. Um, but we'll see, if I have extra, I might actually put it in the freezer. I think I can freeze it, I don't know. I should double check on that. But I think I can freeze it. Um, so there's lots of ways to eat apple butter. So the two main ways that we like to eat it, I say two because, well, there is more ways, but the two main ways that we like to eat it is number one, on jelly bread. Very good, kind of like you would put jelly on top of buttered bread. Super yummy. And then another way we like to eat it is to take a nice big scoop of it and put it on top of cottage cheese and eat it in a bowl. It's so good, so good. And you can do it on pancakes. I mean like, there's a lot of possibilities of things that you can do with apple butter. So let's get started. I'm gonna get out my pressure cooker and actually um, put it on the slow cook setting because you want it to slow cook. I'm telling you, my house is gonna smell amazing today. And we need to get the apples cut. You don't even have to peel them. You just chop them up and put them in there and then you put spices in and just start it on slow. And um, I just chopped them, like I said, didn't peel them. So now I'm just gonna sprinkle over all of the spices. I'll leave the recipe that I'm loosely following below. And what she says to do is do six pounds of apples in your, layer it into your slow cooker. Then do the spices and don't mix anything. So you wanna put it in there. And she actually says, I'm kind of rewinding and going back and correcting myself here a second. But she says to put it on for a high for four hours. So we're gonna go with that, but I have done recipes where you do it on low for a longer period of time. Also, don't mind the background noise. The girls are just playing and imagining. I have no idea what. I know the other day they were leopards and gazelles, so could be anything today. At this point in the day, my girls and I have not had any lunch, and so I decided that I'm gonna make up this for lunch. I kind of planned my timing today on all of these fall recipes. So this is very fall inspired, but it's some pumpkin pasta sauce, and we're gonna do some gluten-free noodles with it. I ran across it the other day. I believe it's kind of like a creamy sauce. 
It looks super yummy, so I'm thinking I'm gonna make this, and if I like it, I'll make it again. I think you could also top it with cheese after you mix it with the pasta and put it in the oven for a good baked pasta, but right now we're just going to do it on the stove top and whip it up so that these little ones have something to eat and I'm getting kinda hungry too. Okay, for this recipe, we are gonna cook up the pasta first because the sauce is made pretty quickly and we'll wanna just throw the pasta right in there. Even if it cools down a little bit while we're making the sauce, we can always leave it in with the sauce a little, it'll heat back up. So I'm gonna get some water boiling, but this is the pasta that we like to use. It's from Aldi, it's their gluten-free pasta and it's made with rice and quinoa. It's also organic, all the good stuff. So let's get it boiling. All right, so that pasta was absolutely delicious. I actually have a friend here that stopped in and we all enjoyed it. It was so good. And I think we're going to make a run to Target here in a little bit because I'm missing a few ingredients that I need for some of my other stuff. But before we do that, I'm gonna mix up some fall harvest inspired cookies. I found on Pinterest, there's some fun colors and they're basically just kind of like a chocolate chip cookie, but they've got some fun colors involved. So I'm gonna whip up the batter for that now. Alright, we made our Target run. I wanted to show you guys these really quick just because they're a seasonal thing that Target carries. This is one of their trail mix. It's the Rustic Pumpkin Spice. It looks really good. And then I also grabbed the Smashmallow Pumpkin Pie. I love marshmallows and I love these. They're definitely not keto friendly, but they're nice for a little treat. So I did put the cookie dough into the refrigerator while we were away. And now basically you wanna make them kind of look marbled. So I have a brown, just the regular, and then I made some orange just to make some fall looking chocolate chip cookies. Okay, so these apples are really <laughs> cooked up. They smell so good. So now I'm just going to ladle them into my blender and blend them all up really well.
Next, we're gonna put together an Oktoberfest sheet pan dinner with brats. This looks super delicious. And to start off, we're gonna cook the brats in this lager. Um, of course, if you guys aren't familiar with cooking with alcohol, the alcohol evaporates and cooks off of it. Um, so it's not an alcoholic dish or anything like that, but you need this. I will leave the recipe linked below for all of this. I'm really excited to try this because it just looks so delicious. So I have these um, stadium style brats. They're just bratwurst brats. And you dump this over this in the frying pan and start them cooking. And it says, I guess, if there isn't enough liquid with this, then you can add a little bit of water to get them cooking. And then I'm gonna start cutting up the veggies that will go on the sheet pan. All right, so I was just checking in on our apple butter, oh, the cinnamon in this and the clove, all of it smells so delicious. And so this has been in here for another three hours or so on low since I blended it up. I could let it go even longer. It'll just get thicker and thicker as it goes. But I kind of like the consistency of it right now. So I'm going to put this into some small jars, probably some pint jars. And I probably will end up not freezing or doing anything else with it because I'm going to give some away to friends. And uh, to be honest, I know that we will eat it up probably before it would go bad in the refrigerator. So let's get this jarred up. Okay, you guys, today was a super great day. Like I said, we had some friends in and out throughout the day today, and it was just so much fun. The smells that were going on in my kitchen were incredible. I feel so accomplished that I squeezed in some of this fun cooking throughout the day. My caffeine high that was going on in the beginning of this video has definitely landed. Oh, it's landed. <laughs> and I am ready to sit down and enjoy some of this sheet pan dinner. Super, super delicious. It smells so good. I'm like so excited to eat it. And I think it's definitely gonna be something I'm gonna make again because it was so simple, but it brought in some new flavors, some new ingredients that I don't normally cook with. And I just love trying out new things. So I hope that this video inspired you for some fall cooking and some fall ideas of things that maybe you'll even want to make over Thanksgiving or possibly even over game day. I think that this cheap pan dinner would be perfect 
for a football evening. So if you're completely new around here, I would love it if you subscribed, joined my channel. I love doing a lot of cooking and meal prepping and all of those good things. And don't forget to leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you thought about these recipes. And give this video a like and I will see you guys in my next video.